Hi, I'm Jason Webster, Beck's Hybrids, Practical Farm Research Innovation Lead. Today we are at the Central Illinois PFR Center in Downs, Illinois. And behind me is a, a piece of equipment that we've been testing out here uh, since last fall. And it's a Capello corn chopping head. And we've really never had chopping heads on any of our farms to do some residue management trials with. So last year was really exciting as we were able to get this Capello chopping head uh, out into the cornfield. And the whole idea with this corn head is to size residue, to break that, that residue down as we're making that harvesting pass in the field. We're not going to come in after harvest with like a flail shredder or anything like that uh, to chop those stalks. We're going to do it while we're harvesting, while we're making that planned uh, harvesting pass out in the field. And this Capello chopping head just worked excellent for us, sizing that residue. We've got a series of blades underneath this corn head. This is an eight row Capello chopping head. We've got a series of blades under each row and as we're harvesting it will chop that residue, size it and uh, make it a little bit easier to get digested and, and uh, uh, broke down the following spring. This is really exciting as we look at continuous corn. One of the problems that we can encounter with continuous corn is what we call carbon penalty and each spring as we have high amounts of residue out in the field and we come in and we plant a, a, a new crop of corn into that corn residue, that existing corn residue, nitrogen can actually be immobilized or tied up when that corn plant needs that nitrogen. And that's what we call a carbon penalty. So what we're hoping to do with this Capello chopping head is to size the residue and make it just easier to break down. So in the fall of 2014 when we took this Capello chopping head out into the field for planned continuous corn rotations, we saw some pretty big differences out in the field. And as you can see by this photo, we've got different areas of the field where we chopped the corn stalks with the Capello uh, chopping corn head and then we had areas where we just used stalk stompers to push the stalks over. There was no chopping action whatsoever. And you can see right to the row, right to the line where we did chop the stalks and where we did not chop the stalks. And we thought this was pretty exciting as, as we look at conventional till, continuous corn rotations, being able to size that residue, make those soils blacker so hopefully they'll warm up quicker in the spring. And again, maybe we can bust through that carbon penalty and not have any issues with the mobilization of nitrogen. One of the big questions I had with this Capello chopping head was in relationship to soybeans. So if we would come in and chop our corn stalks and then come in with a planned no-till soybean crop rotation and tillage program the following year, you know, chopping these stalks and, you know, will it make a mat on top of the, the, the soil, uh, soil surface? And I guess my fear with, with making a mat on top of the soil surface would be it's going to be hard to dry that soil out in the spring. Because again, we're in a no-till situation. We're not doing any tillage. We're not stirring that residue up. We've just got that residue laying right on top of the ground. And I guess it was really fortunate that we were able to test this in 2014 because as we geared up for the 2015 season, we saw flood conditions during planting and really throughout the spring and summer months. And that really gave us a good look of how that residue uh, was being affected out there in the field. What we found is that we actually warmed soils up a little bit better. We actually were able to dry them out where we chopped the stalks because we actually chopped and sized that residue up. We had smaller pieces out there. We actually had more parts, uh, more areas, more surface area of the soil exposed to sunlight and it was able to dry out a little quicker. And some of those beans actually, you know how soybeans, they don't like wet feet. When we were able to dry those soils out in the flood conditions this, this spring, actually gave those beans a, a head start. And so the picture you're looking at right now shows some of the differences out in the field side by side, chopped versus non-chopped. Okay, this was corn last year. We came in and we no-tilled 30-inch row soybeans right between the rows, and you can see how these soybeans didn't like wet feet. Okay, where we had lots of residue and where we couldn't dry the soils out, those soybeans were delayed. Okay, and where we were able to chop and, and, and size the residue, we had more soil, soil surface area, uh, getting sunlight, it dried out a little quicker, and those soybeans reacted to that, and we've got a little bit jump in maturity. And so hopefully we'll see some yield advantages to that as well. We'll have to see what happens when the combines roll here this fall. But stay tuned for more details regarding some of the work we're doing with chopping corn heads and how it's affecting continuous corn as well as soybeans, especially no-till soybeans, that following year. So we'll bring you the results when we publish our Practical Farm Research book. It'll be published shortly after the fall harvest season. Again, stay tuned for more details. Thanks for watching.